Holly's a good dog. Well, Holly's back with me, so is Rosie and the other dog, Lottie, and I've come down just a bit further from the house to look down across the valley of the Cross here. And there's a beautiful view I noticed the other day while taking a walk down the lane. So I'm going to set up just at the top of the lane looking down it. I had had hoped there'd be more cloud today. The forecast said it would be a sunny day with, with interspersed with clouds, but in fact there's very few unless they're going to come across later. But it's supposed to get warmer later. I think it's going to be quite hot as it is. So I'm going to set up looking down this pathway here, right across this view to Fesselins, which is over there. You can see the church. And there's all of these little bits of cow parsley, whatever, here in the foreground, just hoping to pick up on and bring into perspective. I was going to do a much bigger canvas, as I say, and get lots of cloud into the sky, big square canvas, but there's just nothing by the distance. So here we are, this is the view we've got. Draw it out first. The sun's already quite hot, there's a nice cool breeze on me. Hopefully we can see this painting right the way through. First thing is to work out the composition that I want, which is going to be to take in right down to this sunlight at the bottom here and come right up there to the horizon and across about this much sky and then across to that big plant just to my left here Where is he? across to this big plant here and get him in here as left hand side border and some of this hedge on the right as a right hand border this is what we can do with the composition first of all then I'll just draw that out so much more of a traditional landscape today We've got the horizon line here, and the hills, the mountains coming down here. We've got Fresselins just here, a little church. Coming above that, we've got the distant mountain tops coming up and through there, right up to here, and through and up to there. And then the hills coming in front of that down here. We've got the farms just coming in here, the church there, the farms here. There's a tree to the left, a bunch of trees here, a line of trees coming down to the trees here which is lovely because it just helps to have a dark piece to frame that in there. Then there's a whole lump and bundle of trees going along the middle distance here, uh, down to there, a light bit of field just here which is nice, triangular field there and light colours coming back behind there. Then this lump of trees goes all the way across here down here. Now that I've got to bring this lovely path that's here, this track, up. So this comes into here to about here. And that track's going to come straight up to us here like this, and around here, out. And it's going to come up quite wide from there. That's the, that's the dark area there. It's going to come up from there, up through here. And these nice big flower heads coming up through here, up through there. Lovely and dark here, and leaving the eye in to here. So we've got this track in perspective. We're leading our eye in and around here, and lighter coloured plants in the foreground, and the field itself comes around there. I could put a post in here if I wanted. I see, I've got, I've got this plant here, so I think it'll think hold it there, so that should be alright there. And that gives us quite a nice composition. So this is the hedge coming up here, right up, and actually uh, up and out through here. So that, that leads us in quite nicely there. So we can bring this, these plants here a little bit higher. Some of those are going to come into the sky there, just framing and leading us in. So we've got these two posts here, if you like, of plants and trees leading our eye in, round down here, down through here, and back and back up and through into the uh, where the church is there. Not much of a sky, a few distant clouds. I'll go, go at those now. We'll start with the sky as usual. I'm going to work with a, uh, a flat again. I'm going to take my half inch flat as I did in the last painting. Are we on, yes. I'm not going to get in your way today, I shouldn't do. I was going to do a great big canvas but decided not to um, because if there had been more clouds as the forecast had said, that would have been great. But uh, there isn't. Palette ready here now. My palettes, as you can see, they set up a stay wet palette set up here with a, a little mixing palette next to it just there and uh, water over here. My brushes are down below here. 
so I can reach everything. So let's see what we can do. There's our view. You can see what we've got in now in composition. So what we can do with that. We'll come back to the view occasionally. But as I say, that's going to be our view there, taking in these trees right up to here, across the horizon here, round to this high thistle trees here, all the way across the horizon there, down to here, down the track and round here. So this area here. I'll have to use a bit of broken colour today as well. I want to start with that lovely light turquoise and pink that we tend to get in this in this sky here. So I'm going to start with a very light turquoise at first again, up here. Now it seems ever so strong when I first put it on. We know this because, why? Because the canvas is white and, you know, because the canvas is white then this is going to seem very dark relevant to the white. We want to have those lighter colours and, and whites later, so we need to get the canvas covered as quickly as possible in order to be able to see all of our tones working one against the other. The lights against the darks, the roughs against the smooths and the warms against the cools. We've got the opposites in the colour circle to work with, we've got the different uh, hues of each colour, tonal values, Got those things I've just mentioned. Now this is going to be much, much pinker up here in a minute. I just want to get a base coat on first of all of these colours. A bit of mud in it there. A bit of green that shouldn't be in it. But just to get this very light cerulean turquoise. This is a turquoise by the way, a very light turquoise. I'm going to make a much lighter one in a minute. But I didn't want too much sky, so I just want to get the feeling of these very distant clouds today. So let's just start to put those on with some nice vertical brush strokes. Now I've got them going. I don't want any canvas showing. I've got to lose all this bite of this. It's a bit coarser canvas, this one. Probably a bit better quality than I usually use, but <laughs> never mind. Um, I want to come to a warmer blue up there, so we'll take a bit more warmth into our... And this now is um, coming towards the cerulean. This is this is more. This is still a turquoise, but it's coming more towards the warmer cerulean. At the moment, I just want to get a base coat on, so I just want to get these slabs of paint on here. Drag those down. Let's get the feeling of this. Even though it's not Mediterranean quite here, Mediterranean sky. We're a long way from the sea here. We're about four to five hours. inland into the Aveyron, <laughs> inland into the cruise with the Aveyron, what I'm talking about, going back to my previous days when I was in the Aveyron, living near to Rodez, enjoyed it there, had a beautiful place there as well. So there we are, nice bright sky, the sun's going to show the colours out for you today, but I've got to get much much pinker into this in a minute, so I just want to get these slabs going of colour. I'm just going to crisscross and drag them down at the moment in a broken colour fashion. I'm going to start adding these pinks and things in to try and get this brightness of sky. We've got the light blue behind. We've got a light blue behind. I want to start getting some warmer blues up here. There we go. Let's start to use slightly broken colour and I'm going to make it slightly abstract and then I want to just drop these colours in, crisscross across another to get this lovely feeling of, of light coming down here and just blend these colours in slightly. Slightly less over here than I will over the other side but it's a little lighter over this side where the sun's coming from on the left. And we'll just drop these colours in. Slightly crisscross them to get the feeling of a mottled, not absolutely smooth, but the effect of light coming down in this big sky. Well, I'm going to have more landscape than sky today. You notice with the painters who paint in flatter countries, like for instance Holland, if you take Rembrandt for instance, or the Dutch landscape artists as well, uh, Bermier and so on, um, you would uh, see 
a lot more sky and a lot flatter landscape. But with the English landscape, which is responsible, we have less sky and more landscape. So there we go, we just start to build this up with these lovely strokes of colour, I think, today. Don't want to blend in. People tend to go like this with their skies and make everything smooth and blended. We're not doing a photograph. I've seen some wonderful paintings recently on the SAA site as well. People who can paint almost perfectly like a photograph. Well, that's technically very accomplished and it can be admired. But for me, it doesn't do a lot because for me, I want to use paint for paint. I want to do a painting, not, not reproduce what a mechanical machine does. Even though it might be very skillful, um, I think it has much more personality. I mean, if you're just going to copy a photograph, that would mean that if you do it perfectly, every single artist who copies that photograph, their painting is going to come out the same. It will be virtually the same photograph if they're trying to mimic that photograph or that scene. Every single one of my paintings is different anyway that I produce. I never produce the same one. And the style I use, I can't really do that anyway. But um, that means that you know, to painting in this way, not only is every painting going to be different, but if, if we each paint with our different styles, this is going to be a Peter Wood or Margaret Brown or whatever it is. It would be different to them, and that's what a painting surely is about. I'm going to put in some distant hills here, just start them off. Uh, let's see that here. I'm going to start with this very light mauve at first, because I've got more of this colour to put in yet. I haven't found all my colours and I have to really play the colours today. I'm just starting just starting to put one colour relevant to another. So if I put the right colours in the right places, in the right shapes, relevant one to another, we should end up with something that is very much about what we're painting. And it will be about what I see and how I see it. And there's very subtle changes in this as I go through here, I've noticed. Even from the left, even I'm doing this now, it's much bluer on the left, that, than it is on the right in the distant hills. Greener, a bluey green on the left, and goes much more to a mauve and distant uh, misty colour on the, on the right. So I'm going to play quite delicately with these as I go along. And again, I want to... This, this slabbing, so I'm going to just slab in some of these colours. Distant hill coming up. They're not the hills rather than mountains here. But I'm going to use that colour right through the background there because I want it to glow through the next colours coming onto it. So I'll just scrub that across for the minute. Then start bringing up the colours into it in a moment. Because I've really got to get this sky nowhere near finished the sky yet. Some beautiful, delicate colours today, which I've got to try and find much, much more so than last time. Background there. You can see how adding now, I said it was much bluer back here. You can see how by adding this blue into here, I can start to get the feeling of those distant trees and hills. Right back there, if you're interested in painting this way. I don't want to paint like a photograph. Nothing wrong in that, it's just the way I feel about art that I want it to be very personal, not just a technical achievement. But I put one colour over another to blend them together on the canvas, very much as Monet did. But I'm very much about light and atmosphere and catching the moment of the day, the heat of the day. I always go, that's one of the beauties of acrylics, one of the reasons I love to use them like oils. You can, you can work light to dark, dark to light, whatever you like, right through to there. They're going to go much stronger in a minute as well. It's lines of bands of beautiful colours today. Going right through here, a little bit green in a minute. I'll add a little bit of green to that now. Just a touch, because I say it does come much greener across here. Now, a little bit of grass on my brush. But they come... Isn't that lovely now? Look at these colours we're getting now. So we're just making that feeling of that distance. I've added a bit of, a little bit of... Um, Viridian green to my Prussian and ultramarine mix. Just a bit more water just to touch because it's it's, um, it's going to dry very quickly today. You see how much warmer that green is as it comes down here into there. I'm going to feather that down. Feathering almost like stippling, just gently pushing in with the end of the brush to get the paint to go into the canvas. Down through here. 
We need to come back to that sky, which I know we finished the sky. Um, I've got a very, very light, um, almost a turquoise green back here. So I've got some turquoise green, and I'm going to... Nice to have it pre-mixed. I'm going to take some white with that. Very, very light, almost much, much lighter. And let's have a look at that up here, and just look how lovely that sky is. Oh, got some, some grass coming in from last time or something. Now, there's a lovely delicate light, get off the paper, canvas I mean, there's a lovely light turquoise going up here with the pink in a moment, it comes up through here, get a little bit, a bit more colour into it, a bit more green, but it's very very light up here, very very pale, there's more delicate colours that I want to really find today, normally I'm brushing a bit and I'm pushing the uh, the speed of it to capture the moment, but today I've got a bit more time so I can afford to use different techniques as well. And I've taken some more water and I'm going to use a bit more glazing with the, with the paint. I'm going to bring that paint which comes down into there, and then there's a hill there, and it's right down there. And just with water and some of that paint left on my brush, we'll just bring this sky up into just glaze that sky up into this. This is a lovely turquoise green. It comes up into here. When I put that pink on, I mean, what's the opposite in the colour circle to red? Why do we need to know this chemistry? Because the opposite to red is green. So this lovely green is going to really start to sing. If I don't want to lose the, the warmer blues in there either. Now, I was talking about pink being in there. Here's where we're going to start with that pink, which comes actually along the baseline here. I'm going to bring it right away. And it, the clouds are a very light blue greens I've just put on. So if I just bring these little touches and wisps of pink through the distance here, we should be able to make the whole painting start to sing and vibrate with one colour against another great fun. Here especially, it's much, much pinker down here. Got quite a strong pink going all the way across the clouds here. A little bit of light coming in as well over there, across these horizon here. Really try and see these colours one against another if you want them to, to sing and vibrate. We're going to paint a, a painting about this light, about we're not copying it, we're just painting about it. I'm not copying every mark exactly, I'm doing an impression of it. As I say, if I want to use the camera, I've got really good cameras, I can use those. I do put photographs up anyway for you, but this isn't about that. Right the way through here, and this, you can see I'm using paint both thinly and thickly, sometimes a bit like watercolour and glazing, and sometimes just I'll crisscross that up into there. You know, the sky coming up, I'm going to come back with the blues in a minute on this. Until I get exactly the feeling I want. This beautiful pink as it comes across the blue, lifting that blue. I'm not going to paint straight across, I'm going to use my brush strokes to find the surface of this sky. Now that's a problem there, look I've just put a bit of water on there and it's lifted the paint off, so I've got to go a bit more delicately there. I come into here, I've got to use a bit more delicately with the paint and just come back on there and try and get it to come back to where I was before by delicately placing the paint on and letting it dry a bit. Well, I've joined that there, I'll just bring that paint over there again and slab it on and try and get a bit more of a join there. That's better. I feel this, this blue against the warm blue against the cooler. Trouble is once you know something's there you tend to go for it a bit more. Right, so that's, that's, I think we're getting the effect of the sky. Um, I'd like a bit more, a bit more pink coming up into it, perhaps. But we'll see. It's just that greeny. It's this difference between these lovely pink clouds that are just happening into the background, coming up there, and the. A 
line of cloud just coming up on the horizon, which might mean I do get more cloud later on. It's very, very light around here. Very, very light. And so then we've got this lovely uh, jet plane uh, stream in the sky here that's coming through. don't like it when this happens here because I can't see what I'm doing. Let's take that away a minute so I can see what I'm painting there. There we go. A little bit more of the mode that's down here into it just to balance it. Make it a bit warmer up here. Really light clouds going uh, up, say, along this horizon that I haven't. I've painted them pink. Now I want to come back with a little more ivory lighter colour and the warms just to pick them up. See how they are there, look. You know, you see yellow ochre and white would do just as well, but I've got some ivory here I want to use, so I'm just going to bring that up into, into here. Just the tip of the brush, just feather it in. Get that the horizon going along here. Really look for the colours. It's not just white clouds, and I hear it goes a lot more um, cool. The the yellow over here is white and lemon yellow, which I'll show you in just a minute. And as they're coming towards us, by the look of it, the wind's coming from behind me, which is strange, but they do seem to come in my way a little bit. They get a bit warmer as they come round here, so don't you just make that cream a little bit, a little bit warmer across here. Every painting should be different, every bit of light, every time of day we should be able to feel it. Here we are now, it's quarter past ten in the morning. The sun is climbing higher and things are going to get much stronger and brighter. And then a slight touch of the warmer blue to give the underneath of those clouds. So we're going back to the Cerulean now and just going under these clouds a little bit. I'm just going to find the underneath of those clouds a fraction here. It's a little darker, but just a little touch of the blue. That blue is a much warmer, blue, greyer blue, so we'll add a touch of that purple from earlier underneath. You can go as far as you want with the painting. You see, if you, if you start loose like this and then go gradually tighter, you're the one that's in control. You can go as detailed as you want this way, as photographic as you want. You can go to photographic realism if you want. Let me build it up a bit. Right, let's um, start coming down to blocking in some of these areas down here. Need to get the um, basic tones of lights and darks as they come forward. Now, with most landscapes, unless it's a sunset or a sunrise, we're going to go warm, cooler, 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 cooler. We're going to go detail, less and less detail. So we've got our cools going on in the background here as compared to what's going to be much warmer here. I may even go back in there yet with a bit more colour. Um, for instance, where I'm looking at those areas like that, I want to go back in with much cooler back there. And I can just go back across this acrylic with much lighter colours. I can go lighter or darker, darker or light, remember. That's what I'm able to do. So I can, now it's dry, or well, when it's wet even, if you want to, you can come back into here and drop in these colours. You get a lovely delicacy of colour one to another, but I need to get all these darks in. So I'm going to take some of that mauve I was using earlier, a little bit more deeper mauve and some ultramarine and a wee touch of viridian into that. And let's have a look at how we can start to get these. Oh, is that some nice colour? Yeah, it comes into here as well. Trees coming up from through, through behind here. I want a base coat of uh, mid-tones and darks to put my lights onto. I tend to paint from my mid-tones outwards to my darks and then come back and put all my lovely highlights in, which I love doing. I've got a fairly blue colour in the background here. Much bluer than I'm going to have when I come to the foreground. Right through here. I'm just going to paint all that right out at the moment and come back in and redraw it with my brush. Be brave on this. Don't be too afraid to paint out. As long as you don't get yourself totally lost, be afraid to paint out things. Dark in there. Now you see how these dark against the lights, how the warms against the cools and so on. You start to see how it's going to work. Just just beginning to show you now how I can use these stronger colours 
one against another to find these. And I'll put the lights over in a minute, let's just get these in. Some really lovely dark trees going on just back here. Right through here, it's much, much darker down there, so we'll take some of that deep green and the Prussian down here. I could even put a bit of purple now into that down there, look at that going far darker. Down there, to the much warmer colours. I'm having the lights out there, that'll show up better. Then we've got the shadow coming down here. And we've got some beautiful deep shadows. This is where I'm going to start working all over the canvas. So I can compare my colours one to another. I'm going to now bring these colours very firmly, purely, when I see them down to here. I can really start to enjoy myself with them. Much warmer just there. This one crimson to my purple there, here. That comes down beautifully through here. Very deep purple again. One of my favourite colours is purple, but you probably gathered. I uh, don't want black yet. Now we'll take some very deep Prussian again to come with the cools down here. Right through there, right through down to here. Off the edge of my canvas there. And then the shadows that are coming out are beautiful. We've got some lovely blues, blue shadows coming out. This ultramarine pure now. And this is where you can enjoy yourself. This is where I can take the paint on the end of my brush look and slab it in there. Just really enjoy colour for what it is. Again, money eat your heart out because this is where you this is what it's about. This this, this way of laying colour in. Cobalt now, a bit of lighter blue cobalt, than the, a little bit lighter than the um, ultramarine. That comes right up and under into these trees here. So I start to establish some of my darks now. I'm going from my medium tones to my darks, right up into the edges here with that warm sap green again. Slap it on, let's get this painting really on the go. Up here, the darks against the lights, we've got these trees coming up. To get the brush a little bit thinner now because I don't want to change brushes yet. I want to bring out these trees coming up here. Just by using the edge of the brush and stippening it on, I can feel those leaves and branches coming up there, right down into here, through. I can break into that in just a minute. They come right down there to those dark trees. Look at that distance coming straight away. If I come forward with that and go a bit greener, let's take a more of a mid-green here, go a bit lighter on that green through as it comes down here. Slightly um, more orange, we'll put a bit more uh, emerald into that. Come right up into here with that. And you see how it's starting to work now. A vibrancy, a life, liveliness which you want to get. Look at greens going on down here in the foreground into this lot. Yellow ochre and some burnt sienna even, and really start to find these lovely warm. And down here we've got bright oranges even, so it's got fantastic um, colours going on. That colour's going right back into there. Every painting should be different. Capture the moment, the way that you feel as well, not just you know how the place makes you feel. I'm alive here painting today, the sun's out and I'm thoroughly enjoying just being here. Find the tops of those trees a bit more now. That warmer green just, just over the tops, slabbing it in, just feeling the textures, making my mark. Every mark is about what I'm painting. I'm never copying, but I'm making the marks approximately where they are. Go back in with much lighter colours in a minute with a smaller brush as well to establish my lights and darks here. I can use a paint thinly if I want to, so I'll take a little bit of that lovely turquoise green from earlier. I can just use that thinly to come across here and glaze over these distant trees to get the feeling of the tops of them. That's going to be a much lighter colour just there in a moment. Now let's come down to this overall colour here. We've got some smashing, some lovely things here today to paint. Um, there's a much warmer orangey green going on down here. What have we got there? Yes, we've got a lovely orangey. I'm using um, yellow ochre and a touch of um, 
just a touch of emerald into that for the minute, but I want that to be much, much warmer. I'm going to take some magenta and whack that straight in there for fun. I just want to get these beautiful colours happening. And that same magenta, it's a beautiful magenta that, it's coming all the way down here as well. I'm going to exaggerate the colours, I'm not going to be too, I'm not going to have lots of finesse at the minute, I'm just going to whack these colours in. It's down here, into there, into these shadows. Let's really enjoy our colour. Put in some pure colours at the moment, and my marks are still about what's going on here. Right across there, into there, up into the hedge. You see now these warm suddenly go back to the cools. We're going to put some of those cools back in here and link it together. We've got the buildings and things to put in back there, yeah? Let's really take some um, chrome yellow deep and some of this colour and we'll just find these lovely strengths of orange and whack them in. Chrome yellow deep and some magenta. Wonderful colours to use and we'll really feel these bits of sunlight that are coming on down here. Where are you going dog? Change the whole thing if you go in the front. Big strokes. I'm still using my half inch. Shan't need to change down for a good while yet. Let's feel this up. Try some of that pink coming in here. A bit more yellow into that pink here. Yeah, that's more this colour. Look for one colour compared to another. That's why I'm working over all the canvas. We need to look at this colour compared to that colour compared to that. We can't just. I know I've done it with the sky a bit, but we can't just finish one bit and then leave it and come back. Uh, try to do, we can't do it section by section. We want one colour going on all over, like putting a jigsaw together. Keep the whole thing moving. And sometimes I'm just dragging it across the other paint, sort of get a sort of glaze across it, just to feel like this. Just let the texture of the canvas do some of the work. Look, as that comes over there. In almost in a semi-abstract way at first, if you like, just to get the, the colour on, just to know what you're doing, just to feel it. You slap those colours in the, in the right sort of places, and let's try some deeper reds going on here compared to that. So as it comes back here, there's a much deeper, we've got some lovely rich warm colours coming in here, which I want to push. Now if I push myself now, I can see those colours. If I don't get on with it, if I don't, if I pussyfoot too much, I won't see them. And I've got to try and find them here. See where those are. Very cool green there, because I want a really cool green into blues coming in these shadows down here, all the way along that track, and into the, the hedge here a bit, up into there. There's cooler greens happening amongst those warms, if you want to paint like this. You can tell you what, this is what I developed and, you know, if you like this freedom, then uh, you can see how I blended those together then and lost some of the purity of the colour, but it won't matter because I can come back into it at any time like I am now. I can bring these warmer colours back up into here now. So I started off in some ways quite tight. And I've suddenly gone really loose now. I may even come back up into the sky because the clouds actually are now coming towards me. And I can now actually see the clouds I wanted in the first place. There's a nice lump of cloud here that I might use in a minute. And so I'll go back up there and, and if I want to. I don't have to stay in one place. I'm not bound by any of this to um, be stuck anywhere. Never am I saying I'm better than anybody else or as good as. or I'm just me and I paint the way I want. And I pick up from other people. I'm learning all the time, same as you guys. So, I mean, I don't just do this and think, well, that's it. Um, all the time I'm painting, I'm learning something new, I hope. Otherwise, there isn't much point in doing the painting, because if I'm just doing the same old thing in and out, I'm not gaining anything, I'm not learning anything from it. So, each time I work like this, something new is happening, something exciting is happening, which is just great. The paint down behind these. I didn't do that last time. I had to paint them in afterwards. Um, paint behind these... Um, to the easel. So, what I want to do is get rid of these, these bits. You can see I'm, I'm killing the painting a bit because I'm having to lose these bits of white canvas, but I don't want them. I just want to get rid of them. You can see how the trickles work and how I come back into it again. It's no problem. I pick up the paint at any time and come into it. I need to lose all of these bits of 
snowy white texture that I just don't want. I want solid paint in there. You see our composition coming back again now. I'm holding it in here. And I've got them there. Then I've got to go back up here and say, well, if they're up there, they've got to be coming to here as well. So we've got these buildings in the background here. Um, the Fresselins, which are which have got deep purple and so on in them too. That's the church tower up there. The buildings coming down behind. Just find them all. Just put the right shapes in the right places. Relevant one to another, and everything will everything will come together. Now I'm enjoying it more. I can see what there is. I should be able to come now with a smaller brush and whack in some of this stuff in a minute. Some black in there as well. As for close up, I use a bit of black occasionally, close up for a dark, just to really feel some of these darker areas. It's not water, no, but I can see these colours there, so I'm taking them and exaggerating them to make the effect I want that I feel is here. I haven't put in the light colours yet. Remember I've got all my light colours to put in yet and I haven't even started on those. So a smaller painting today. Um, could have done a bigger one. Now the clouds are coming out. In fact there were some lo lovely clouds coming out here now. Might go back with the sky in a minute and repaint some of the sky I think. Build all this up. All these lovely darks and lights back into here. I can go back and the clouds are coming over, I can, with the, I can, don't get too many, I can get them in before they change too much. Whilst I've got the time, I still don't like this texturing of the canvas that is showing through in places and I've got to lose that because it's going to annoy me. So from my medium tones towards my darks and then back up into the lighter medium tones again, keep working backwards and forwards as you feel your way through this painting. He's come back up to this sky though, because uh, I can see I've got some lovely cloud effects there that I'm just not... I was going back to a... maybe a mistake, but I'm going back to a, a same size with a filbert now. So to look at these clouds, because they're gorgeous. Um, pick up on these a minute. I want to raise that out of the way, because that shadow's really annoying. Let's put that there for a minute, see if that'll just hold. Right, we've got a composition coming up this way. We've got cloud now coming up and through here. Which is rather, this is what I wanted in the first place. Which is why I would have done a bigger one in fact than this. Uh, which I was expecting to do today but when I got here there was no cloud as I say so I couldn't. It's your composition so I feel that we need um, these clouds placing in just this. I'm using what's out there but I'm placing them where I want them even so. And we've got this warmer cool We've got this idiot, I've got this warmer uh, cream at the moment. I'm going to come to a much cooler one in just a minute. Acrylics then we can change whenever we want. We can make light over dark, dark over light, thin paint, whatever we like, whenever we like. There's a bit of brush strokes into the perspective business. I'm going to use my brush strokes like a clock almost for a minute just to bring these clouds them some more perspective and depth. But that, you see, we've got those lovely colours happening there and then we suddenly notice that in fact, of course, those colours are going to be happening down here into these um, lovely plants and flowers that are just down here. So while I've got it on the brush, I should start on some of these, even though I shouldn't really be doing these until the end. I just get caught up with it and just want to show you what's going to happen as we start to bring in uh, the lighter colours right through here. Just how wet we have the paint and how much paint we have on the brush as to how much goes on here like this. I don't want to use a small brush and be putting every single flower in. That's not what I'm after today. Just an impression of it. I haven't finished putting in my, my other lighter colours yet. It's getting so Involved, and I've got to put paint on my neck now. Involved in different things, I'm carried away here a bit. I must uh, 
pull back a moment because I'm going too too far ahead with these lights. More yellow in there. Let's find those lovely bright. Cadmium red going in to play against the cadmium orange and make the orange seem more orange. Could play one thing against another all the time here. Try some of that alizarin crimson into it now. Up here. Up warmer just up there. Through there. So the more those clouds come up, they're going to be a bit of a nuisance later because they'll cover up my, my lights, but also they're giving me a chance to put on. Um, highlights in between, so I must keep going not just on one area or on one place or on one colour, I've got to keep going over the whole painting, like the jigsaw I was mentioning, a strong colour, Time to get some of these background much lighter tones in. Feel the sunlight coming across these fields. And I've got to use smaller brushes occasionally because I've got to start now to go to the smaller parts of the jigsaw. I've got to go down to the patchwork. So I want to use a. I'm going to go out about a quarter inch um, and just start to really look at these. Very, very light warms I've got in the background going on here with the church, for instance. No worry. A wee? No worry. <laughs> A bit warm. Oh, it's not as bad as the other day. As I say, I nearly collapsed the other day when I was doing that one over at Crozon. Uh, just managed to get through. this now I've worked up to my white so I've got up to the very light colours now putting highlights in over plants and flowers you can see out there we've got we've got the darker colour in now I just want to catch the light just across the surfaces of these The sun almost above me, it's half past 12, so I've had three hours on it, which is long enough usually for me. Let's just get some very, very light blue down by that at the bottom. A larger brush again. I just want to get to some extremely light. Blue just down here. 
what that does. Against the uh, warm colours. Just needs a bit of cool in there, I think, to make it feel warmer. We can't keep putting warm on, we can put cool in to make the warm so There we are, I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been a bit different, hasn't it? Well, it's been nice to get a really nice landscape to work from. Here we are then, we've finished Impressionist piece, just down below my house here at the Renaissance, next to Fresselins, where Monet himself painted, and many of the Impressionists came here uh, to work, famous artists in this area. 